let's talk about episode 14. This episode, honestly, I, w I was surprised by how good the episode was in terms of in terms of how much it actually set up Teddy as a villain and how much it actually set up the the end game for these final two episodes. I, I wasn't really expecting that from this. I was kind of expecting just catching up with Alicia, maybe learning a little bit more about Teddy. But we learned a lot about Teddy and we like the, the final however many minutes there. That was that was amazing. And now episode 15 and 16, if you have watched that trailer for episode 15, there is so much excitement for these next two episodes. And I really think the big event that we all think is going to happen right away, I think it's actually going to happen. I just I have that feeling based off of the finale synopsis. And I'm going to do a trailer breakdown video right after my review. So stay tuned for that. If you are new to the channel, make sure to be a subscriber to to get that later. But and also maybe hit notifications. I'm not sure if you guys have notifications on or anything like that. But I know that does help because I know some people will say, well, I thought you were going to do this video. And then I'm like, yeah, I already did the video, but I guess they didn't have notifications on or yeah. But episode 15, like there, there's just so much excitement. I hate that we have to wait an extra week because obviously it's not coming this Sunday. It's going to be, it's, it's airing the, the Sunday after. So I'm guessing for AMC plus, we're not going to be able to watch it this Thursday. I'm guessing it'll be the, the following Thursday, which really sucks. I, I hate that I have to wait that long. I'm too excited with the ending to this episode, what they set up here. When you watch the trailer, like episode 15 is going to be nuts. And I do think we're going to have some character deaths. There's going to be some major character deaths. And I, I don't know who exactly yet, but w with that big event, like it, I think it would be a missed opportunity if it, like say, say the missile goes off and it like blows up the entire area sort of thing. It's like a nuke. I think it would be a missed opportunity to not have someone die in that situation. And I did a video the other day talking about Dwight's death with that whole crying poster theory. What if it's Dwight, right? It it could happen, and I I still have a lot of doubts with that. But you never know, like you never know with fear. I never thought that they would kill off John or Virginia in back to back episodes. Like what? What was that about? Right. So, anyways, I'll save this talk for episode fifteen. That should be up pretty pretty soon, within like fifteen minutes or so. So after this video, jump onto that one, and yeah, we'll talk about that there. But let's talk about Teddy. Obviously, the opening sequence here it was it was pretty great to actually see Teddy's backstory. And man, I, like I. I was wondering how crazy he was, because obviously I knew he was crazy. I was wondering just how crazy he was, and he really was. His whole thing with his mother, I thought he was a lot like Norman Bates for a little bit. I thought he had like mommy issues, and we see that later in the episode where, well, I thought that was his mother anyways. He took his mother out, and he was going to bring her somewhere and, and, I guess, give her new life, because the way he views the dead and life in general is like he... He doesn't view life as like living in, in that sense, right? Like he kind of views it as whether you're dead or not, you're still a part of the earth. You are still alive in some sense. And that, that is like a positive mindset because that's kind of how I view view the world a lot, right? Like if you die and your body degrades and stuff, you are still a part of the earth. You are still alive. You are still around and all that. But where it gets a little messed up is because he was like a mortician and all that. And if he preserves you, that's like your ultimate punishment because you don't get to decay. You don't get to become a part of that. You you're preserved. You you know, it, it's like the ultimate hell. And so that's how I knew he was a little crazy. <laughs> that's was, and that's the thing about Teddy is that that's the one thing I will say, too, is like I also get where he's coming from with everything. With everything that he's saying, like he's a smart guy, he is a smart guy, and you, you can't say that he's like just dumb and whatever. He is a smart guy. It's just that he had, you know, I don't know if it was a bad upbringing or if it's just kind of something wrong in, in his brain, but he he definitely has some issues. And the whole thing of I just needed to be patient that was just so creepy. And it, it's it's the actor, it's his performance. It's just such a. This was the episode where I was like, you know what, I prefer him over Alpha. And it's, I'm not trying, when I say that, I'm not shitting on Alpha at all. Like, it's just more of like my preferences on a villain is I, I really like Teddy. He's just such a complex, crazy lunatic. And it's just like any other villains really, you know, like you have a favorite villain. Like if I were to choose out of Venom and Carnage, I prefer Carnage because he's a little crazy. He's a little more interesting. Venom is still badass. He's still really cool. But I obviously prefer Carnage just just for that reason. And I would say the same thing with Teddy. He just seems a little crazier, you know, and it's more my taste. It's more what I like to see in a villain. Alpha was amazing. I'm not trying to say she was like the worst villain or a bad villain or anything like that. She was such an amazing character. Samantha Morton is just incredible. But I think Teddy just adds so much. And I, I wish that character was on The Walking Dead. I think if he was on The Walking Dead, 
it would it would change so much like this group and what they're planning to do man if this was a part of the walking dead story where they actually set off that nuke and all of our characters are forced to live underground like that would feel like season one of the walking dead with the cdc it would feel like such a like close and self-contained story like that and that's how i know i really like this story a lot and, and the writing is just so good right now and looking at my notes here actually i did write something down because i'm kind of confused by this if you guys can clarify that would really uh, i would appreciate it but why did teddy grab uh riley's balls <laughs> like i i didn't i didn't get that he did that i can't remember what he said now because I, I watched it a few days ago but he just he grabbed his balls and was like, well, he said whatever the hell he said. And then I guess Riley calmed down. He wasn't going to kill Alicia. And I, I, my interpretation was that he was scared that he was going to rip his nuts off, <laughs> basically. So we do see Dakota in this episode. She tags along and Dakota has become a very interesting character to the point where I actually kind of like her now, but like not now. I don't like her, but I like what they're doing with the character, because if you remember a few episodes back or, or in my reviews, I was saying I'm worried they're going to try and make us like her like they wanted us to like Charlie after she killed Nick, because I think that was a big mistake. But I think they just they know what to do with her now. And we see that throughout the episode. That was the biggest thing with Teddy and why why he's so manipulative and why everyone why he has so many followers. And I honestly, I think he is one of the only villains and I'm even including The Walking Dead in this. I think he's one of the only villains that is that manipulative and that successful at it. Because I would say with Negan, he more, he ruled through fear, I would say. That was his big thing. He ruled through fear and people wanted to survive. So they kind of followed him. And it, it wasn't really, you know, like that's really all that was. Teddy's not ruling through fear. The Whisperers kind of ruled through fear as well. They had to do this or something bad was going to happen. And that's why we saw some Whispers like Gamma. She kind of wanted to, you know, she didn't want to be a Whisperer anymore. We saw some Saviors start to be like, you know, but with Teddy's group, it is, they are brainwashed and, and it's a little more, it's more sinister, I would say, what he's doing is because he's so nice and we saw that happen with Dakota. People who are just very weak-minded, very impressionable, especially Dakota because she's very young, she's like a teenager, right? She's having all these issues. She obviously has parental issues and she meets this guy who is very charismatic, seems to know a lot. And, and is helping her and almost confirming a lot of what she's saying. She just starts to kind of want him to live. And then when she sees Alicia doing certain things, Alicia's not responding the way that I guess she should in that sense. But I don't blame, blame Alicia for not wanting to, you know, be associated with Dakota because I wouldn't want to be either. And so that's where we see Dakota really just become one of his followers. And it was that easy. And I think for everyone else, it was it was just as easy, too. So that's where Dakota is now. Dakota is with Teddy. And I think she's going to die. That's my prediction is that I actually think Dakota is going to die this season. I think Teddy, Riley, this whole group, most of them anyways, and uh, Dakota, I think they're all going to die by that nuke. Dakota might realize at the last minute, oh, no, I don't want to be in this situation. And then boom, she's gone. But I, I think that's what's going to happen. Now, the character that appeared out of nowhere, his name was Cole. I thought it would be someone from season three or, or something like that. But I didn't like I don't really remember anyone from the stadium. Because I know June was there, obviously, but that's all I really remember. I don't remember any of the side characters and stuff. And yeah, when he came back, I did kind of recognize the woman, though. And I don't know if she's played in some other roles. So maybe that's where I recognize her. But I kind of recognized her a little bit. His whole thing was uh, that's kind of that was the big moment, I guess, of the episode, right, was the showdown there. And man, Teddy is just too confident. He is like to the point where it's, it's just like, I mean, I guess if he doesn't really care if he dies or not, he just he's kind of that's what's just so fascinating about him and just how everything played out. Cole's deaths, everyone else dying, how in the end he was kind of right with everything. It was just it was kind of shocking to see that. And so overall, this episode really focused on Alicia and Teddy and Dakota, and they were just driving around and Teddy wanted to learn more about Alicia. I guess he, he really wants Alicia to become the leader of of what he's trying to basically replace him. And so by the end of that showdown, I can't remember exactly what Alicia said, but that confirmed to Teddy that she was the right person. And so that's what we see at the end. That's basically the big cliffhanger here at the end is that Alicia's locked up in that in, in the bunker and Teddy and Riley and Dakota and everyone else are going to go detonate that nuke or that missile on that submarine. And we saw in the trailer that yeah, that is going down. That is actually going to happen. So I actually think it is going to happen. It's just I wonder what characters are going to be in the bunker as well. Obviously, I think Morgan and a bunch of them are going to be. I just don't know if everyone's going to be. 
And so I think that's where they're going to go. And my general idea, and I'm going to elaborate on this more because I, I want to st- just keep this a review of the episode. But where I think this is going is I think that nuke is going to go off at the end of episode 15. In 16, we're going to see them deal with some stuff that we may see a time jump in that episode or it's going to be in season seven. And I have a feeling that, that they might actually jump forward in time to, I guess, The Walking Dead's current timeline just because somehow they have to do that. And I think that would be a very fascinating story if for like eight years, six to eight years, however long that would have been, right? Six to seven, eight years around there, they were all trapped underground like the entire time. And then maybe in the beginning of season seven, we see Althea and the CRM trying to find uh, Alicia and Morgan. It's been years. They were trapped there for so long. And Althea, maybe she's joined the CRM at this point. So I think that's that, that's my prediction. I think that could be where we're going here. So anyways, I'll leave it here. I will talk about that in my episode 15 trailer breakdown. This is a great episode. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.